Okay, so in this video, I'm going to address how you can use the concept of leg dominance to dial in a player's pressure shift and dominant ground reaction force uh, in order to improve their ball striking. So all this stems from work we've done uh, with Mike Adams and, and his original concept of posting. So his original concept were of center post, front post, and rear post golfers. And we think this really applies um, to their leg dominance. So if you're a rear post golfer, you are most likely a right leg dominant golfer. If you're a front post golfer, you are most likely a left leg dominant golfer. And so dialing in your pressure shift and dominant ground reaction force pattern to your leg dominance um, generally equals good things in terms of your ball striking. So if we talk about the maximum pressure shift into the trail side, the continuum that we see is generally between about 60% to 100%. Um, most golfers fall within that range. Obviously you can't have more than hundred percent, but we do actually, we are starting to see some golfers that are falling below the 60% threshold. And some people are actually in the fifties in the amount uh, of pressure shift into the trail side. And so obviously the closer you get down to 60, the more you would be a front leg dominant golfer or left leg dominant golfer for a right-handed golfer. Um, and these front post or left leg dominant golfers would need vertical, the vertical force to be their dominant ground reaction force. Uh, the more your pressure shift sneaks into the 80s, the high 80s, 90s, and up near 100, that would be a more rear post or right leg dominant golfer. And obviously, if we're getting 100% of our pressure or near 100% of our pressure into our trail side, we're going to need that horizontal force to push that pressure back to the left, uh, get to our lead side to hit the ball. And so we're going to need to be a horizontally dominant golfer. Uh, and if we're between those two things, which would be around an 80% pressure shift, that's a, considered a very centered pressure shift or a no leg dominant pressure shift. Now we can use our torque force or our rotational force as our dominant ground reaction force. And so dialing in these things and these matchups uh, for individual golfers can be pretty important. And I'll show you a little use case from a couple of years ago uh, when I worked with uh, major champion Francesco Molinari. So this is one of the first uh, swings that Francesco took that particular day. You can see it carried 285 and was 47 yards offline. So it's kind of a block cut way out to the right. Um, and so when we dug into his pressure shift and his dominant ground reaction force pattern, what we can see here is there's a big mismatch. Uh, so as you can see, as he takes the club away and starts to shift that pressure to the right, his max pressure shift gets into the 91% range. So this is a very right leg dominant ground reaction or pressure shift into the right side. Um, with the, you can see actually his mass has shifted quite a bit to the right and he's getting a lot of pressure into his right side. But then when we look at his ground reaction forces, that's a big mismatch to what his dominant ground reaction force pattern is. Because you can see here his horizontal force doesn't even reach the bottom of the tour average band his torque kind of gets to the middle of the tour average band and his vertical force blows way through the tour average band. And so his dominant ground reaction force in this particular swing is vertical force. Um, and a lot of people had seen Francesco working on his vertical force in several videos that were shown of him working on the range at different tournaments. So this is something he has worked on, uh, but matching up that ground react or that pressure shift with that ground reaction force pattern uh, is a massive mismatch. So 91% into the right side and vertical being your dominant ground reaction force pattern is a big mismatch, which I think was leading to some of these um, way offline shots. Another thing we noticed is the timing of the ground reaction forces was not good. So you can see he doesn't reach his peak torque until here. So his peak torque is happening uh, as the club is approaching the ball. So after club parallel in the downswing, we want that peak torque happening around left arm parallel in the downswing. And you can see his peak vertical is after he has hit the ball. So once again, not a very uh, efficient uh, use of the ground in order to hit the ball, costing him some speed, distance, and direction in his swings. Uh, so we tested him and he tested out to be a centered or a more non no leg dominance Swinger. So we hit. Uh, we did the uh, the golf specific leg dominance test, hitting balls with the feet together, one leg back, the other leg back, and he definitely outperformed the other two conditions with his feet together, um, which suggested that he was more of a centered golfer. And so we gave him some torque drills. Uh, first thing we tried to do was normalize his pressure shift, and so you'll see here was one of the swings after we did that. Um, and so once we've normalized his pressure shift to be 
now to 76. So 76 is much closer to that 80% um, centered golfer pressure shift. Uh, it also is a little bit on the left side of that, which matches his ground reaction forces much better because you can see that his torque, uh, or sorry, his vertical is still his dominant ground reaction force. He's worked on that pattern quite a bit. That's a tough pattern to break. And that's where a lower than 80% pressure shift is a much better match to um, to that vertically dominant swing that he's presented with. Uh, you'll also notice here that we were able to give him, so one, first we worked on uh, centering up his pressure shift, getting it to around 76%. And then we gave him some torque drills. And you can see we were able to increase his torque from a maximum back here of 96 foot-pounds of torque up to a maximum here of 105 foot-pounds of torque. And so now matching up the pressure shift with the ground reaction force pattern, kind of making him a centered to maybe center front golfer here uh, allowed him one to have a better matchup and allow a much better timing of the forces. So you can see now his peak torque happens right around where we'd want it. Uh, right around left arm parallel and downswing. And the peak vertical is happening much earlier as well, just between left arm parallel and club parallel, kind of right around uh, where we would want it. And this also equals some pretty good things in terms of his uh, launch monitor condition. So now we're carrying it 302. So we're carrying it significantly further. And now we're only 50 five feet offline instead of 47 yards offline. So this matchup, uh, getting him to match better uh, his leg dominance pattern, um, getting his ground reaction forces to match better his leg dominance pattern um, and having that more center to front pressure shift, adding some torque to get him uh, more towards his centered uh, testing results uh, equals some very good things in his uh, speed and his distance and his dispersion of those shots. So making sure that we match up pressure shifts to dominant ground reaction force patterns is a great way to use the force plate uh, to help golfers get better.